Let's talk about GPU rendering, and is it cost effective? Stick around and we'll be looking at the latest lineup of GPUs from NVIDIA for price and performance to see if it's good enough for rendering your next production. Hi everyone, Mike here from the Media Man Studio Review. We're trying to bridge that gap between the creative process and the technical requirements. On our channel, we strive to help artists and studios make informed decisions when it comes to equipment purchases. Sorry for the talking head video, but due to the world situation like most people, I'm stuck at home working at my home office for the next few weeks. But if there's a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave it in the comments below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. If you find these videos informative, please go have a look at some of the other videos on my channel and help build this as a community or a source of information for studio equipment. Why use GPU rendering? GPU rendering uses the graphic card in place of the CPU. As GPUs are primarily designed to render images quickly and can speed up the rendering process. One of the things that inspired me to do this video was I was visiting a studio that does animated children's stories, and they were looking for a way to decrease the time it took to render their productions. This studio uses about 20 or 30 Intel clone boxes with GTX 1060s, and they were looking to replace their entire farm and all of their equipment. One of the greatest benefits of doing GPU rendering is that the GPU does 95% of the workload for rendering images. The rest of the computer components are just supporting equipment to make the system functional. So in order to decrease render time, all you need to do is replace it with a more powerful GPU. Most modern computer systems will allow for a simple GPU replacement. The latest gen GPUs can still operate with the PCIe Gen 3 specification. But there are some bandwidth limitations when you're working with cards like the RTX 3090. But I'll cover the PCIe Gen 3 versus Gen 4 topic in another video. Before we get on to the benchmarks, I encourage you to stick around to the end of the video. I will give you a bonus tip on how to build your own GPU system, as well as a cost versus performance comparison for GPU, so you can make an informed decisions when you're purchasing your equipment. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Today we'll be looking at five of the most popular GPU renderers used in the animation and visual effects industries today. V-Ray, Redshift, Octane, Blender Optics, and Arnold. In this video, we'll be reviewing the latest lineup of GPUs from NVIDIA, the RTX 3000 series, as well as looking at a few past generations so we can compare what cards are offering the best performance, as well as what cards are the best buy for GPU rendering. First, let's look at the list of lineups of GPUs to compare cost and specs. The cards are listed with the RTX 3090 with the highest CUDA cores at the top of the list, and the RTX 2060 Super at the bottom. The price on this chart is the manufacturer's suggested retail price at the time of the card's release, as we need to have some reference of the cost of each GPU to compare the benchmark results to. Take note of the cost of the RTX 5000 cards at $2,299 and the Titan RTX at $2,499. These cards are still sold on the market today at or around these prices. We will take a closer look at the performance of these cards to see if they're a good value for GPU rendering. But cards like the RTX 3070 and the RTX 3060 Ti are still a great value at $499 and $399. Now, if any of you are following the current situation in the GPU market, you know that there's limited stock or no stock at all for most GPUs. Sales price of these GPUs are going up for one or two times what that number is. I just wanted to be transparent with all of you and let you know that if you see a card on the chart you're about to see and it has a brand name like Asus Turbo, that's a card that I physically tested myself as I don't have access to all the GPUs on this list. So what I did is I went online and looked at the benchmark databases and took the top 10 scores and averaged those out to come up with a number that I could use for these comparisons. But let's take a look at the benchmarks to see how these cards came out in the GPU tests. I'll also put a link to all of these benchmarks in the comments below. So if you'd like to run the test yourself, please let me know how it goes and add a comment. First up, we have the V-Ray CUDA test. It's not surprising that the RTX 3090 wins in every benchmark for a single GPU. But is the $1,500 price tag worth the 28% improvement over a card like the RTX 3080 that is sold for less than half the cost? But rendering with two GPUs, the dual RTX 3070 is at the top of the list in every benchmark results, and the total cost for both cards is only $1,000. And notice the score of the RTX 2080 Ti, a card that retailed for $999, and the score of the latest gen RTX 3070s, which is sold for $499. The RTX 3070s performance is 57% better than the last gen cards with a substantial lower investment. Next, we will look at the V-Ray RTX test. The new RTX 3060 Ti, which is sold for 399 
as outperforming the $2,499 Titan card by 13%. But the 3060 Ti sells for less than 20% of the purchase price of the Titan. But we do need to take into consideration that the RTX 3060 Ti uses the second generation RT cores. If you haven't seen the review I did on the Asus ROG Strix RTX 3060 Ti, I'll put a link in the comments below. Let's move on to the Octane Render Benchmark Charts. The most surprising results are the RTX 5000 or Quadro branded cards. In almost every benchmark, this card performs lower than most of the RTX consumer cards. In this benchmark, the RTX 2070 Super GPU still manages to outperform the RTX 5000 by 2%, but the RTX 5000 card is more than four times the price of the RTX 2070 Super. Just a note for my viewers, NVIDIA has stated that it will no longer be using the name Quadro for any of its GPUs. It will be interesting to see what NVIDIA comes up with for studio performance grade GPUs in the future, considering that all of the RTX 3000 series cards are outperforming most of the Quadro GPUs. I expect that the current gen cards to perform well, but even the entry level low cost RTX 3060 Ti is beating the RTX 5000, and in the case of the RTX Titan matching the performance. Next up is the Redshift benchmark results. With the Redshift benchmark, the entry level RTX 3060 Ti is outperforming the GTX 1080 Ti by a whopping 49%. I only mention this as I know many studios that have invested in a GPU farm that use GTX 1080 Ti's or even lower performance cards. A simple upgrade to a GPU like the RTX 3070's at half the initial cost would outperform the current farm by 100% or more. Now we can take a look at the Blender CUDA benchmark test results, and I used three of the most popular that are out there for testing. I used the Pavilion, the Classroom, and the Classic BMW render. The RTX 2060 Super had a hard time with the Pavilion render, and I double-checked these results in the Blender database twice. Without having an RTX 2060 Super to physically test myself, I cannot confirm these test results. But other than that, most of these results are consistent with the other benchmarks. Last up is the Arnold benchmark. Although Arnold is not as popular for GPU rendering as some of the other renderers, these test results remain the same. The current lineup of NVIDIA RTX GPUs are destroying any of the past gen cards. But what do all these benchmark tests mean to the animation and VFX industries? Well, I feel that smaller studios and independent artists are now on a more level or even playing field when it comes to GPU rendering power. Now everyone has access to affordable render equipment to be able to render high quality images within a reasonable render time. But what's still plaguing the animation and visual effects industries is the ability to get our hands on these GPUs and get them inside the computer so that we can use them in our studios. Thanks everyone who stuck around to the end of the video. And before we get on to the bonus tip, I just wanted to remind you, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification so that you'll be aware when I release other videos and let's together build a community or a resource where people can go and get great information on buying equipment for studio and creative industries. Okay, it's time for the bonus tip. For productions and studios, it's always been a balance between cost, performance, and budget. So let's take a look at what GPU offers the best rendering performance for the price. If you take the score of any of these benchmarks and divide it by the cost of the GPU, currently the RTX 3070 offers the best price versus performance if you're building a single GPU render system. The RTX 3090 is faster, but that comes at a high cost. For my benchmark test results, the scores for the two RTX 3070 GPUs did supply improvement over a single RTX 3070, but this may not scale for production rendering. There are many factors involved when building a multi-GPU rendering system. CPU clock speed, the amount of RAM installed in the system, as well as network bandwidth are all important when feeding data to multi-GPUs. But the results are still obvious. A multiple GPU system is still better than any single GPU system for rendering. The scale of improvement is going to be 90% or better for every GPU you add to the rendering task, but you will need to slice up the render job to best utilize the performance of each GPU in a multi-GPU system. Keep in mind that your system will need to have the correct number of Gen 4 PCIe lanes to feed a multi-GPU system. So any i7 or i9 or Ryzen 5000 or Ryzen desktop chip, it's just not going to be a good choice when you're making a multi-GPU system. You can install more than one GPU into some of these motherboards, but you're going to have to take the 16x PCIe lane and then split that or lower that down to an 8x so that you can have two 8x slots in your uh, motherboard. Some models out there, you might be able to install multiple GPUs at 16x, but there's just not a, enough PCIe lanes uh, from the processor itself.
The best choice in the market today is a Threadripper Pro. It offers 128 lanes, a PCIe Gen 4, and that's enough to feed you know, five or six or seven graphic cards. So there are a few manufacturers, Asus, Gigabyte, and Supermicro, sorry, and Supermicro that are releasing WRX80 socketed motherboards in the next month or so. And Lenovo already has a system on the market, the P620 ThinkStation, which is a Threadripper Pro workstation. And it has seven PCIe slots and six of them, five of them are 16X. I did a review on that. If you didn't see the review, I'll put a link in the comments below, but take a look at that. It's a pretty impressive machine. I did a lot of rendering with two RTX 3070s in the machine, and I was really impressed with the outcome or the performance that I got out of that Threadripper Pro machine. So take a look at that link below uh, in the comments below. So that's gonna be it for this video on rendering with the NVIDIA GPU. I hope you found the information informative uh, for when it comes time for you to purchase your next GPU rendering equipment. So I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the other videos on my YouTube channel. Up here we have a link to how to install two GPUs into a workstation, the RTX 3070 review, as well as a review down here to the Lenovo P620 Threadripper Pro workstation. Thanks for watching.